Over the past month, Pride celebrations have been held in some of the nation's largest cities to recognize LGBTQ rights. But smaller towns have also been marking the occasion. Special correspondent Kat Wise traveled to rural Kansas, where an artist is trying to foster understanding in his community. Her report is part of our arts and culture series, Canvas. On a recent afternoon, a local crowd filled Hidden Trail Brewing in Garden City. They had come out for a special event with lively entertainment not often performed in western Kansas. The Lipstick and Lashes Drag Show was part of a family-friendly Pride Arts Festival called Playcella, which also included rainbow-themed crafts for kids. Where am I paying? Resources from a local behavioral health organization. If you guys have any questions over mental health, we'll try to answer some questions. Puppet show, 15 minutes. And a queer-themed puppet show written and performed by the event's organizer, Brett Crandall. He said you weren't handsome. Well, you are. He's a 30-year-old puppeteer, actor, writer, and LGBTQIA activist. He grew up in a small town called Deerfield, about 15 miles from Garden City. I can't see 2012, Deerfield, Garden City, doing any of this. It just makes it all the more cool that it did. Coming of age in a close-knit rural county, home to one of the country's largest beef processing plants, he says he felt different early on. These are people that I've known a lot of times my whole life. Conversations that I did not have with them because I did not at one point feel safe to come out. Not that I thought that anyone would physically harm me, but maybe that their love had conditions or that it wouldn't be what would make them happy. To actively pop those bubbles um, is healing for me. After high school, Crandall quickly made his way to New York City, where he lived for about 10 years, first attending the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, and then working as an actor and developing his talents as a puppeteer. He moved back to Kansas in 2019, thinking it would be a brief stop before relocating to Los Angeles. Then his plans changed. I really wanted to start putting out queer shows in the middle of the country. Over the last couple of years, he's done just that, working full time, traveling around the state to put on shows like The Trials of David, a queer biblical puppet play, and Murder at the Wolf Hotel. I was flattered when thou called me handsome. I love you, but I am Undine. At Play Cella, he premiered a new show called Undine, a queer fairy tale. It's an adaptation of an old French play with a female lead. In this version, a male water sprite, played by Crandall, oh no, I am caught. falls in love with a handsome knight named Hans. No, I thought this for us would end kindly. But they face some hurdles. It's a whole different set of rules when you're in the theater or when you're setting an audience that you get to listen and pay attention and let something affect you. So then putting queer stories into that and allowing folks to feel sympathy for queer folks instead of just, you know, the discontent or malice or uh, fear, whatever it is that they've been working with or taught and, oh, that is not, was not their fault, you know, that's not, that wasn't their idea in the first place. Last year, he organized the first Kansas play cella in his hometown, which included a small march through the streets. He proudly walked arm in arm with his partner, Mark Malone. Okay. Among Crandall's biggest supporters now and throughout his life, his parents, Doug and Cindy Crandall, who helped out at the crafts table. Ten years ago, things were much different, especially in rural Kansas. I mean, it's just, you know, you didn't, you didn't know of anybody you know, at that point, but today it's, it, it's everywhere. When that's a good thing. The stigma is still there in rural America, for sure, but I think that, that the kids are more willing to come out at, at a younger age. 
such a relief that they, they have events like this now. Gerald Hall, who goes by the drag name Daphne Moonwalker, grew up in a nearby town and says he was often bullied. Now he is trying to use his performance art to help others. No power on earth can change it. We want to be the voice for anybody that needs a voice. If you don't feel safe, if you don't feel like you are being included in things, reach out to us. Us as performers, we, we are here for anybody. Beyond his activism, Crandall is also focused on arts education in his community and other rural towns. He wrote an opinion piece recently about young people fleeing the plains when they lack opportunities to flourish in the arts. The kids that grew up here, I hope, don't feel the impulse like I did that they have to leave, that they have to go away. That way, that's the only way they'll find peace for themselves or to be able to get to know themselves. We're just going to keep coming up with new ways, very old ways of, of giving that uh, sense of, of value to yourself um, and to our community that you don't, you don't have to go anywhere else. It's just, it's all right here. At the end of the puppet show, Andine and Hans are finally able to be together. A happy ending he hopes will inspire his audience to find its own. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Cat Wise in Garden City, Kansas. It's heartwarming.